Alright, so it's on day 45, and uh, it's quarter to five in the morning. So I've got to get going in 45 minutes. Get down to the beach. I'm going to set off for my 100k to Brisbane, and uh, I've got to do this early because uh, there's not enough daylight hours otherwise. Uh, I'm looking to arrive at about six. I'm just going to crash. I didn't have the brilliant night's sleep. Just on and off for some reason, just, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter now, I'm just looking forward, just focus on what's ahead, I um, worked out how to stitch videos together, so what I'm going to give you today is uh, the progression through, <laughs> through 100 kilometers, and uh, I'll probably look as tired as I just did then, uh, near the end of the 100, but as I slowly wake up, I'll be a peak somewhere, and, ah, uh, We'll see. Okay. Just switched to 100k breakfast, starting with about 12 wee picks, and we'll go from there. <laughs> That's Jeff, by the way. Uh, say hi. Hi. Yeah. Jeff has uh, kindly got up at um, um, quarter to five in the morning as well, although I think he beat me up and <laughs> he's dropping me down back down to the beach. So, um, thanks to Jeff. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm at the start. I'm pretty pumped up now. Uh, there's nothing quite like uh, watching the sun rise over the sea and uh, and think to yourself, right, I'm going to run until that thing sets on the other side. I'm going to watch it the entire way. So, uh, it's me heading up that way and that's just, hitting surface paradise is just an absolute blip on the map compared to getting all the way to... Uh, Brisbane, so I, I better get moving. I'm not going to stuff around. Okay. All right, I just stopped for a bit of a status update because uh, I'm about 25 k's in, and um, where I'm at is uh, on a service road which accompanies the highway. Uh, it runs most of the way to Brisbane. In fact, at these early stages, it's called the Entertainment Road uh, because it's it's what sets up uh, wet, wet and wild. It's what uh, all the buses and all the cars come up and park in and drive along to get between all the theme parks. So it's quite convenient to run on because although there's a bit of traffic here, uh, it's way less than um, the highway itself. And uh, to go out into the mountains or around or anything like that and just shoot this up until about 150 k. So. Anyway, uh, 25 k's in, I'm not going to lie, uh, I'm not feeling brilliant, um, muscles are a bit weak, the uh, bones are a bit brittle, the tendons are a bit tender, and uh, yeah. Okay, I'm about 35 kilometers, and I can start to feel uh, different parts of my body slowly starting to give way now, uh, the arches of my feet start to just feel spread out and stretch and get a bit sore, kind of like, you know, if you're holding up your arm out sideways after a while, it just, it just starts to give way and it aches and you can feel it just ease down, ease down, kind of like holding the camera out, you'll notice in some of my videos it starts to drop, so I'm sort of holding it out here somewhere trying to get a good view, and as well, um, my trapezo is a bit sore because uh, I went through most of the water already and, and refilled, so it's back up to 8 litres again and at about uh, 35 k's which is most of the way through the day I'm usually pretty tired anyway and so just putting extra pressure on them again that I'm not used to but yeah 35 k's in still got a long way to go right all right so I'm not even halfway in yet I'm at 45 k's and uh, my feet are just killing me uh, I'm trying to compare this to like other days or uh, the day in my training the furthest I ran was 85 k so I'm trying to compare the experience to that what I should be feeling like and I've never had my feet like this before uh, I think it's largely due to uh, these shoes being at their their wits end they're, they're on their last day funnily enough they're only 20 running days old they're uh, huh but they're probably done close to a thousand kilometers and so uh, I, I need a new pair in Brisbane there's no doubt about that and uh, yeah I just remember that time I did 85 I certainly just got exhausted and uh, 
was literally in a world of pain. I just couldn't couldn't keep my eyes open and keep connected with the world that I was in. I was just totally internally focused about how exhausted I was, and it's it's not like that now, which is good. It's uh there's aches and pains all over my body, but for the most part, I can try to just disconnect from them. Just know that they're just somewhere below me. You know, pain down in my feet. Just ignore it. Just keep going, because. Uh, I don't think they're going to break. I don't think they've got a stress fracture or anything like that. So, uh, look, yeah. It'll be nice to be at halfway, and then I can just uh, be on the downhill from there, basically. Anyway, yeah. All right. Oh, well, yeah. That's halfway. Uh, that's four hours, 45 minutes, and 33 seconds. Oh. Ah, mate, that's certainly faster than I was thinking. I was just hoping for under 10 hours. If I get halfway in that time, that's nine and a half to finish. And I tell you what, I tell you what, if I've got any ounce of pride in what I do, I know I'm not racing anybody, but if I have any sort of courage or bravery, I'll make sure that I repeat that and even raise the bar. Yeah. Because you see, if I was my own coach, I'd say to me, I'd say, Brad, that was, uh, that was good. That was excellent. In fact, I'm happy with that. You're certainly uh, well above what we planned for, what we talked about. But did you deliberately set out for the sake of slacking off in the second half? Did you deliberately set out hard so that you could take it easy later on. And I would say no. No, I set out at a certain pace because I felt good and I felt like I could achieve that. And I tell you what, I'm gonna have the, the courage or the self-respect to make sure I do achieve it. Yeah, it's that sort of challenge that makes it worthwhile. It makes me feel better, you know? I'm gonna pick up the speed, I'm gonna forget about my feet and uh, I'm just gonna fly. Yeah. Right on. Okay, I'll keep moving. Okay, I'm another like six Ks down the road from the uh, the 50 mark, and it just dawned on me that I can't just hold pace. Uh, if I want to beat the time from the previous half, I can't just hold my pace and kind of just like pick it up at the end because uh, I can't guarantee that in Brisbane, you know, I'm gonna get the clean run to be able to do that. So it's just dawned on me that. In the third quarter is where you really got to push it when you have the chance, you know, when you've when you've got a clear run, that's when you got to go for it. Like these streets are long and straight, and uh, there's no traffic lights and whatnot. And so now's the time. Now's now's when I have to. Okay. I'm uh, at 76 kilometers, and uh, I'm about to uh, meet a guy here who. Uh, He's going to accompany me uh, the last way into, into Brisbane, which is uh, awesome because I'm in a, a world of pain. Uh, it would be really nice to have someone accompanying me, so just to distract you. I've kind of got it under control, if you know what I mean. Like, it, it all builds up slowly, so uh, it's, uh, it's manageable. Uh, but I've got a, a few minutes to... Uh, spare before he, he shows up because uh, I'm a bit ahead of the schedule which is good uh, give me a chance to refill this uh, this hydration pack because I'm, I'm out again I'm through I've been through 11 liters so far and uh, like 11 muesli bars and so there's still 25 to go I'll easily go through another four or five all right 85k and uh, believe it or not I'm uh, feeling fantastic it's a uh, it's a funny one it's uh, it's awesome to have um, I'll show you in a second. Got a guy called John here running with me. And uh, something about company just lifts you and uh, just running faster and faster and uh, feeling better and better. And um, you know, right now at 85, and that's the furthest I've ever run before. And just, you know, could do another 20 or more, just whatever. So, um, anyway, that's John. All right. I am in Brisbane proper now. I am um, made it. <laughs> Uh, but I'm at 93 and a half kilometers. And so I'm gonna run to the people's place I'm gonna stay at rather than catching any public transport to make it up to the 100. 
Uh, I'm in a pretty good mood. I'm in a hell of a lot of pain, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna snap, so uh, should be fine. All right, I'll uh, let you know how I go when I'm when I finish. Well, maybe at the hundred, I'll let you know what the time is. Okay. And he does it. A uh, hundred kilometers in uh, nine hours, thirteen minutes, and twenty-three seconds. Woo! <laughs> and uh, that means ah, uh, it's thirteen. 23, about 17 minutes faster than I did the first 50. Ah, that's obscene. That is obscene, that is determination. Oh, that feels good though. <laughs> oh man. So as you can tell, I'm in a world of pain to uh, prove prove I did just uh, what I did. What was it? 100 kilometers. All right, okay, good fun. Uh, but it's not over because this is... Uh, this isn't, you know, five reps of an 1800 and two 1500s. This is get from A to B, and I'm not there yet. So uh, keep running, Brad, and uh, and I'll keep in touch with you then. And he makes it 108 kilometers in uh, nine hours and 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, oh, oh mate. Oh, what did it take? It took 18 litres of water, 18 muesli bars, 12 wheat bix, 2 bananas, 6 bottles of Gatorade, and a packet of jelly beans. <laughs> oh, and I feel stuffed. I am in a world of pain right now. It is ridiculous, the type of oh, things you feel. Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> How are you guys? Okay, what did I learn? If you put your mind to it, you can.